Hey folks, this is immigration attorney Hassan Abdullah here in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm preparing this video to discuss the issue of the um, deferred action for childhood arrivals special rule that has been established by the President Barack Obama. Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit different from a lot of the other attorney videos you might find on the issue because I'm just going to be giving off my, you know, my opinions, basically no preparation based on my experience and, and you know we've been doing some of these cases for the past few weeks now uh, quite a few actually um, and you know people need to understand the benefits the risks the political implications and I know it's important also for me as an attorney to be politically neutral but I'll give you a, a little bit of my political opinion of this issue as well so first of all what is this this is not the dream act this is something that might spur on the passage of the DREAM Act. So here's the idea. Basically, the DREAM Act is something that has been pushed around for about 10 years through Congress, and it, it, is, not getting, it is not getting passed. And so it seems that the president is a little bit frustrated about this because he feels that there's a humanitarian issue here. Basically, the DREAM Act would allow those who entered the United States who are under age 16, uh, if they, when they entered, if they entered before that age and they're under the age of 31 and they um, have have a college, high school degree, the diploma that is, or are in school, or if they're in school, then they can apply for um, status and eventually a green card. That's the idea. Now this deferred action against uh, for childhood arrivals doesn't give you a green card. All it does is it gives you two years of deferred action, meaning you're not going to be put into removal proceedings once you get this benefit. Plus, you'll get work authorization for two years. So w what is this, though? There's about 1.8 million people who could potentially benefit from this. So the idea is, it seems to be, that if you get enough people of this 1.8 million people applying for it, you get close to 2 million people out of the woodwork. You know, a lot of people are under the radar. And if you get them into the system, basically it'll be impossible to remove that many people from the country. And so the idea is it'll become a problem to have these people in the system because the immigration courts are going to be bogged down if you're going to have to remove 1.8 million people. It's not going to happen, um, most likely. I mean, that's, that's the idea. That's the idea. And once they're out in, in the open, Eventually, there's going to be enough pressure from Congress, in, uh, to, to Congress people, to finally pass the DREAM Act and allow them to finally get a green card. That is the idea. And then, after that, in my opinion, I think what should happen, because, see, here's what the other side is saying, the, the, the side who is against this, that is. I'm not talking conservatives or Republicans or, or Democrats. I'm just talking about the side against this is saying, we're just encouraging people to come to the country illegally. Uh, cross the border and and just again hope that their kids will get some kind of status and get amnesty we're just encouraging it no more amnesty we can't do this anymore and um, you know I can understand and respect that opinion what I think should happen though is this should pass the dream act itself should pass and the borders should be very secure afterwards or actually now the United States borders need to be more secure there needs to be more protection to prevent people from coming here um, through unlawful means so that this won't be a problem in the future. But right now, you've had a semi-porous border and you've had a lot of people coming to the country and you have them here as youths, as young children, and they've grown up. And as Barack Obama has said, the, they are as American as anyone else except for their papers. You know, they grew up here. And so this, this law this rule allows them to get their status and I think that's fair at this point uh, but afterwards you know you gotta get tough you gotta really strengthen the borders um, and <laughs> politics aside this is a complicated issue there is almost like a we want them here for certain things kind of policy but let's not even get into that it's, it's not really relevant and germane to this issue um, so what about this? So what are the risks? What are the benefits? The benefits are this. You're going to get protection from removal 
guaranteed protection from removal for two years as long as this rule is is valid uh, and you know I would say as long as the president is there he's gonna keep this going and um, you get work authorization you can apply for work authorization you, you're, you're supposed to apply for work authorization along with it for two years so why is that such a great benefit well there are people in this country obviously who uh, don't have a social security number and they have difficulty getting jobs because they don't have work authorization so if they get this deferred action approved when they file their application they'll get their work authorization and they'll get a social security number and it'll be good for taxes it'll be um, more people being productive and and paying into the system so there, there's a benefit there now the um, other thing the other reason people are applying for this is because they want to get driver's licenses so um, you get a driver's license um, that's a big benefit obviously but guess what USCIS is the federal government they're the ones who will make decision on this uh, on your application and they're the ones who are going to give you the work authorization and the Social Security Administration is the federal government so with the work authorization you can apply for a Social Security number but driver's licenses well a driver's license is issued by the state so it's up to the state California is, is a bit uh, progressive you could say and California is one of the first states to actually come out and say we're going to allow people who apply for this DACA deferred action for childhood arrivals we'll call it DACA to get a green uh, not green cut to, to get a driver's license Arizona on the other hand we all love Arizona they are saying no I mean it's a wonderful state great people live there however there's there's a sentiment there's there's a bit of a friction and uh, pressure to against you could say those who have arrived without inspection and the governor has said very vehemently no you're not gonna get a driver's license and some states so you know you're gonna see a lot of division here you're gonna see some states giving people licenses you're gonna see some states not giving people licenses so that's another issue you need to keep your uh, you know pay attention to as well so keep that in mind how's this all gonna pan out who knows but the idea is eventually this will lead to some lasting relief as a matter of fact the U visa was a temporary visa uh, it was not gonna lead it didn't and eventually when people applied for U status it was not gonna it didn't actually lead to a green card until finalized until the regulations were finalized and and when that happened then we had a system to obtain permanent residence. So hopefully the same process goes on. Oh, by the way, U visa is for those who are victims of crime who have been helpful to law enforcement and investigation. You can get a status and eventually permanent residence based on being a victim of certain uh, criminal activity. Anyway, we're hoping that the same thing will happen here. Um, and again, the basic criteria, which you probably know and seen and heard, but just for the sake of putting it out there, if you're under 16, when you arrive to the country, you've been here for five years before June for, uh, 15, 2012. You've, um, you know, uh, have a you're in school or you're uh, finished your GED program or your high if you have a high school diploma, um, and you're under age 31 from the date of June 15, 2012. You can apply for this benefit. So whether or not you should apply, what are the implications? Again, this video gives you a basic idea of that, but it's always a good idea to talk to a professional. You, who knows, you might have another type of immigration benefit. Um, that's why it's good to go to a professional to discuss this issue as well. So anyway, I've given my basic opinion of that, and I, I hope this is helpful to people who pay attention and listen to this video. And uh, thank you for watching, and bye for now.